Hello, and welcome to Creative Technology. My name is Colleen Guzman, and I'm going to be teaching you about creativity in the gifted and talented sense of the word, and how to use technology in order to facilitate that creativity in your classroom. So before I get started on the first part, which is where we talk about creativity and what that means kind of in the gifted and talented realm, I want to kind of introduce myself. My name is Colleen Guzman. I am currently the GT specialist at Bernal Middle School. I have been the GT specialist. This is going on my fourth year there as the GT specialist. I worked at Pat Neff Middle School, which is a Title I school with Northside, and was the seventh grade science teacher and taught gifted and talented students there, pre-AP, gen ed, everybody at Neff. And then before that, I worked at a charter school uh, called Lighthouse Charter School. It's a little charter school over by Jones Middle School. And there I taught 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade science. And then I also taught 7th grade math to the 8th graders because they were behind. And I taught art to the 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade girls. And I also facilitated the science fair for the whole campus, pre-K all the way through 8th grade. So I had a lot of job titles over there. I've had a lot of experience. So I have hopefully some good experience to bring to you when we talk about creativity and technology. So one of the reasons that I wanted to bring this up is because I foresee technology as being the future of where our students are going to go. And so I feel like understanding how to troubleshoot technology and use technology is something that's going to be important for them as they move forward, whether it's into college or into the job place or wherever they move forward to. So I had already started doing these things before we had to go into distance learning. And now that we're doing distance learning and virtual type learning, I think this becomes even more important so that we can offer these technology options to our students so that they can still get this creativity, this gifted and talented creativity side while they're still on their computers or on their devices, okay? So the first part of this learning adventure is going to be actually talking about creativity in the sense where we're talking about it for the gifted and talented learner. So I'm gonna show you my screen. So I have to kind of look down so that I can switch things over. So in creativity, we talk about FFOE. And I'm gonna tell you what each of those stands for so that you will know what they are and how you can use them in the classroom and where you can kind of go with creativity in regards to this FFOE, okay? And that's my name, that's my Twitter handle, and that's where you can see me on YouTube if you'd like to see me on YouTube. So the first F in FFOE stands for fluency. Now, we understand fluency when you're speaking, when you've learned a language, it's when you can express yourself easily, right? When you're fluent in a language, I am not fluent in Spanish. I know enough Spanish to order from my local uh, taqueria and to kind of sort of have a conversation, but that doesn't make me really fluent in Spanish. Um, I am fairly fluent in regards to science. Um, I can usually express myself very easily. Um, and unfortunately, you can't see the bottom of my slides because my head is too big. But <laughs> with creativity, fluency means you can express ideas or you can express many ideas. So in the world of science, especially in middle school science, we have to know earth science and biology and chemistry and physics. So we have that fluency of science. And I'm, I also teach English language arts and I've taught social studies as a GT specialist. So having that fluency is being able to just express yourself very easily and come up with a whole lot of ideas about the subject and the content. So one of the things that we do when we're working on fluency is we basically just have people write lists. If we were practicing this together, if we were together someplace and I was doing this training for you, I would have you make some kind of list. It could be things that are rectangular. If for ELA class, it could be nouns, verbs, and pronouns. For science, it could be marine organisms, terrestrial organisms, things that are made out of cells. Um, 
for social studies. It could be state capitals. It could be cultures of the world. It could be countries. It could be oceans or bodies of water. Um, for math, it could be even numbers, odd numbers. I'm not so great at math, so I don't know exactly where to go with all of that. But basically, fluency is just writing a list. And what you usually want to do with this is give the students some kind of time frame, okay? Generally, you want to give them about three minutes. I wouldn't do a whole lot more than three minutes. Maybe you could do five. Five is kind of pushing it. People get kind of exasperated by five. You're just kind of sitting there and struggling. So three minutes is usually good. Gives people enough time to... to really jot down really quickly what they're thinking of and then kind of think beyond that and and kind of look at some of what they've written down and and then think okay a marine organism I've got whales and I've got dolphins and I've got jellyfish will organisms need plants too or what do those things eat so it gives the three minutes gives you a time to do those associations right so you can write those things down and you can get to that list and make that list as long as you want and then what you're going to do is obviously you're going to share the lists, right? So you're going to go around the room and say, okay, um, you know, Johnny, what, what was one of the state capitals that you got? And he says, okay, I got Austin because we're from Texas. And then you're going to ask the whole group, okay, how many of you got Austin? Oh, okay, great. So we all knew that one. And we're just going to kind of go through that list. And then as we're going through the list and talking about it, then it's something that we can remember so that maybe next time if we did this game or something, we would remember, okay, when we were going through that list, I remember that we talked about this and this and this. And then maybe if you're trying to connect it to your content, you have them all list something and either they hit on something that you really wanted to talk about and so you can pause for a minute and you can say okay that's really great that's one of the things we were going to talk about today and you can kind of segue into that or if they don't if nobody puts that on their list then you can say okay did anybody think about x thing oh oh i did but i didn't write it down okay what do you think about that and then it becomes a discussion that can lead you into it now this creativity does not have to be connected to a lesson. It's great if you can, but it does not have to be connected to the lesson. Remember that you're compacting your curriculum four days a week, so you have that fifth day where you're working on some of these GT characteristics, some of this creativity, you're working on the year-long project, but sometimes they need a break from the year-long project. So those days are great times to do these types of things, okay? So that's fluency. Let's look at the next one. The next F is flexibility, all right? For flexibility, you have to be flexible, right? So when you think of flexible, you think of a gymnast and, and they're very flexible or a circus act, Cirque du Soleil, and you know, they can bend around and everything. But in creativity, we're talking about flexibility in that you can look at things from different perspectives, from a flexible point of view. I love this uh, picture that I added up here where everybody's looking at the same thing, the elephant, they're all blindfolded though, and so they don't see that it's an elephant, they're just getting it from their little perspective, their little moment of where they're at. So this little guy over here at the tail thinks, well, this is definitely a rope. I can't see that it's an elephant, but it's a rope, right? And then this one by the trunk thinks, well, I don't think it's a rope. It's a snake, right? It's much larger than a rope. And, and then this one's by the big old leg. And they're like, no, I don't think it's a rope or a snake. I think it's like a tree or a sapling or something, right? So it's being able to see things from all of these different perspectives. Or I like this one who's wearing the hat and then the different ways they wear the hats. And we can get into thinking hats and all, all kinds of things. I can go off on a tangent and be here for three hours just talking about this. <laughs> but um, I just wanted to kind of go over this flexibility part. Uh, many of you may have seen the picture where it's one person is on this side and one person's on this side. And there's a number and one says it's a six and one says it's a nine because again it's your perspective and it's how you're looking at it um, one of the ways we do flexibility often in the classroom 
as regards to doing it with an assignment is doing ologies or ologists, where you look at something from the perspective of somebody else in, in a different field. So how would they look at what you're looking at, but from a different perspective, okay? Um, if we were together, one of the things we do is called transformations. Flexibility and transformations is a great way to get students to look at something and think about it in a different way. Um, so this, I oh, used an umbrella, and an umbrella is not an umbrella when it is a blank. And then I would have given you this, <laughs> and you would have it on a piece of paper, and then you could turn it any direction you want, and you could turn it into something else. Um, it could be as simple as, you know, bellows, and you've got a fire and you're stoking the fire, and this is a set of bellows to stoke the fire, okay? So it, it just depends on how you wanna turn it. Um, maybe you turned it and it became a flamingo, you know? And these are the wings, and then you added the head on there, and it's sitting. So it, it just depends on how you look at it. And what's great is then we get to see how different people in the class look at it different ways. So that's flexibility. And I actually have on the next slide, I have some examples of what some of my students did with this. I start out the year because we're the Black Knights. So I start with a shield and some swords, and you can see that here. So one of the students turned it into a turtle, and you see how they're adding that whole background? So with flexibility, you're adding the details, you're adding something extra. So with the little bird, they turned it into the beak and then added the eyes and then the whole body, and then we have all of the clouds and stuff on top. We have one getting their ear pierced, and we have a little fairy garden, and you can't see this, but... Um, you can also, there, there was a Batman down there. So I'll share this with you so that you can see some of the examples of what my students did. You want to encourage them to create a whole scene around it, okay? Make it something that is way beyond what they see. So if they're looking at the umbrella and let's say they turn it into the flamingo, okay, well, where is the flamingo? Let's add some water, you know, maybe the flamingo, like, you know, flamingos eat shrimp, so maybe they've got a whole shrimp cocktail going on with a little umbrella in it so that there's a play on the umbrella from within the umbrella and you've got a palm tree, right? One of the things you can do when you're practicing with them is you can create your own. So you can show them examples. So have fun with it, show them how you're having fun with it too, and you can create these examples. Most of them have done these in elementary school a lot, and they enjoy them and they know exactly what to do. You do have some that are reluctant, so sometimes you have to kind of talk them through this if they're reluctant and they don't feel like their art skills are as good, um, but they will get there with some practice, okay? So those are the two first Fs, right? We've got fluency and flexibility. And now we're going to go on to the O. So for O, it's originality. You're original. You can come up with something on your own, something out of the box, as we say, right? Um, you think independently. You think creativi creatively. Ooh, can't speak today. Um, it's something unique or unusual. A lot of the times when we think of gifted students, this is exactly what we think of, right? We think of this originality. They can come up with these things that nobody else would think of. And this is really something for me that I really want to foster because these students who can come up with this originality, they're going to be, you know, the next Steve Jobs. They're going to go out there and find the cancer cure. They're going to get better energy resources, right? This originality is going to move us forward into places that we haven't been before. So originality is, to me, extremely important. And it's one that I try to focus on as much as possible to have them think of something on their own. And it's hard when you're a child to think of something new and unique because you feel like everything's already been thought of. So one way to practice this is to kind of practice small. One of the things you can do very simply is design a t-shirt, right? Everybody wears shirts. 
We all wear shirts to school. A lot of the time we wear shirts to show off our personalities, to show off the things that we like. Um, so this is a really good way. Then this is something again that I generally do at the beginning of the school year. And then I take this throughout the year and add different things to it. So for the beginning of the year, you're just creating a t-shirt for your school, something for your mascot, something that shows school spirit. So we have the Black Knights and they are used to seeing the Black Knight that we have. But how could you do that in a different way? You know, uh, how would you represent a Black Knight abstractly? How would you represent a Black Knight that shows who we are as a campus, right? So we talk about those kinds of things and we showcase school spirit and we go through there. You can use this in conjunction with lessons. I especially find this easy to do when I'm using it in English language arts because one of the things you can do is have them design a book cover. Having them design an original book cover of their own that would describe the book that we've read or the short story that we've read to a reader, right? I know you're not supposed to judge a book by its cover, but we often do. So if they wanted somebody to judge this book or this short story by this cover, what kind of cover would they make? What original cover would they make, okay? So they don't have to be curing cancer. They're just coming up with some unique original idea. Another way that I use this is in science, especially when we talk about adaptations and we talk about in the long run adaptations and how the earth can change and maybe global warming. What I do is I give them a picture of an iguana and then they lightly trace the iguana and then they'll choose some type of event. Maybe the earth has become very hot and it's predominantly deserts. How has this iguana adapted and changed what does it look like? What is its skin like? What is its colorations like? What are, what are its habits, right? So create this new original iguana that lives in this. Or what if the earth is covered in snow and it's an ice age? You know, what does this iguana look like? So we can take things that we know from animals that are already adapted to those environments and add them to our iguana and talk about what potentially our iguana might look like if they lived in one of these things. Um, you can also do that with something that they find in space. You know, you, you go to a planet and the planet's like this, has this X type of climate. You know, what does an organism on that planet look like? So there are lots of different ways. Um, you can have them create a new state flag that represents our state. Um, if you're in social studies. Again, I'm not quite sure with math what original thing, but I'm sure you could have them create something original, even if it's just a, a way, like a poster or something, an original way to show their classmates how to remember PEMDAS or something like that, okay? So originality is a really great one, and there's lots of different ways that you can do it, either standalone by itself, or you can integrate it into your lessons, okay? So the last thing we're going to get to is the E. The E is elaboration, okay? Obviously, if you're elaborating on something, you're providing extra details, right? Elaborate on it. Make it bigger than it is. So with the teddy bear, you just, you get the blank teddy bear. Now, give me the teddy bear's life story. Well, what is going on with this teddy bear? Okay, well, he has these little button nose. This teddy bear really likes to work out, you know, so they're elaborating on this. Um, you can't see behind me, sorry, <laughs> but behind me is a picture of Wicked. So that author elaborated on that story that they saw of the Wicked Witch of the West from the Wizard of Oz and made that. Um, it's one of the reasons why I love Marissa Meyer books is she uses this elaboration where she goes in and she elaborates on these fairy tales and gives them a twist and gives them a different backstory. All right. So you can add details, fill in the gaps, embellish. This is especially great for English language arts. It allows that chance to go in and write a backstory for a character that we didn't get to see very much of, or let's say you really hated the ending to the Divergent series, which I totally did. Um, you can go and write a new ending of what happens in that story. So elaboration is really great. I use this a lot in English language arts. If we were together, 
one of the things that I would have you try to do is this drawing starts. Um, drawing starts are very simple. You just give the kids a couple of shapes and then it's an unfinished drawing. They elaborate on it and they illustrate something. In this case, it's asking something that you might see or do in the spring, okay? So maybe they just come up with this and in the spring, you know, they go to the playground. So this triangle becomes part of a seesaw and they build a seesaw and then that arc in the back is like the jungle gym and they draw that and they have kids and they have flowers everywhere and all of a sudden they've elaborated on what's happening in this drawing and they've created a whole spring scene, okay? Or maybe that arc is some water and there's a sprinkler system going on and then that little house is like a dog house and, and the dog is in there and there's flowers in the background and in the spring, you know, maybe the dog has puppies and in the spring there's babies. There's so many things that they could do with this and you'll be amazed at how many different things that people can come up with looking at the same two things, right? So the nice thing about elaboration is it gives you that chance to look at something that's partially started and think, how can I add to that? How can I make something else with that? How can I change that or elaborate on that? <laughs> okay, so that is F-F-O-E, right? Fluency, flexibility, originality, and elaboration. One of the things that I have that I'm going to add to give to you guys is this chart that shows you some of the things that you can possibly think of. I've talked about a lot of these as we've gone through. And so I have a list here in Fluency, list all the things you can think of that are orange, purple, green, blue, whatever. Write as many words as you can think of that mean the same thing as whatever. Create a list of everything you can think of that is fuzzy, soft, rough, whatever. These are all just lists, remember? Fluency is just making a list, okay? Flexibility, name some other uses for. So it doesn't have to be a drawing. I showed you before that we did the drawing, um, the transformations, but you can make lists as well. So just name another use for an umbrella. What else could you use an umbrella for? Maybe it's an old umbrella and it's not super great, so maybe you use it to carry dirt in your yard. Or maybe you fill it up with water and you use it to water things in your yard. Or maybe you put your, it's a really big umbrella and you put your kid brother on it and spin it around and it becomes, you know, a sit and spin. <laughs> um, or instead of blank, you can use blank for blank. So again, with the umbrella, instead of covering you during a rainstorm, an umbrella could also be used for blank. So these are sentence starters that you can use as well so that it doesn't have to be a drawing. So if you have a lot of students that are frustrated with that drawing aspect, you can do this in a written format as well. And these can actually be writing prompts for ELA or they can be warm-ups for science and gives them that chance to have that flexibility. Again, originality is you're gonna design something, invent something, create something. Those are the keywords that you're looking for. And in elaboration, you would add some details, explain, create a poster, okay? And then in this PowerPoint, I've left it blank at the end. So if you wanna kind of, I would normally, when we were here at this point, I would have you jot down some things that you felt like you wanted to use right now in your classroom. So how would you want to use this if you're teaching social studies? What would you want them to list? You know, would you want this to be something where you're getting to know them and you're getting to know what they know? So maybe they're listing as many Native American tribes as they can think of, or they're listing as many states, or like I said, state capitals or something like that. And then in flexibility, what is something that you would want to do with your group to see what, you know, how can they look at something from a different perspective? And it kind of gives you an insight too on who they are and where they think. And you'll find that some of the gifted kids are, tend to be a little narrow-minded on something that they specifically love. So I have a young lady who loves wolves and everything we do is gonna be wolf related. If I gave her that umbrella, 
then that umbrella is going to become a shelter and a den for a wolf, or it's going to become some kind of water dish or food bowl for the wolves. Um, she can, which is great because for flexibility, if you're, if you're, focused on something, but you can see how all of these other things can fit into their environment, fit into what they've got um, or what they need, that's great because you're kind of MacGyvering things. I don't know if I'm old now that I said MacGyver. Um, MacGyver used to be a guy on TV who could take anything like a paper clip and a rubber band and he could turn it into a motorcycle for them to use to get out of bad situations. It wasn't quite that drastic, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, for originality, again, some, what can you use in your classroom? What original thing would you want them to come up with? How can you use this to get to know them, right? Uh, have them create a sneaker, have them create a t-shirt, have them create a poster, have them create something original that you could use in the classroom that would showcase something. So that's originality. And then elaboration is how would they add on to something? Elaboration I usually find comes best after we've done something or talked about something and then they can kind of add on to it and how would we add on to it, okay? So that's the first part of the lesson. You can take a break and take a breather <laughs> and go take a few minutes and think about how you would use these things, what concepts you would use, because we're looking at two different things. We're looking at the concept of creativity and the concept of FFOE, and then how to integrate that with technology. So I haven't talked to you yet about integration. That's what I'm gonna get to next. I'm gonna talk to you about how to integrate each of these and a few of the technologies that I would potentially use or that I have used and ways that you can use them. So I'm gonna kind of train you on those technologies just a little bit, all right? That's the first section of creativity and technology. I'll see you soon for the next section. Thank you.